So, hello. So, this is my newest magazine, and it's called World Magazine. This is the 10th edition, introducing the amazing and wonderful city, Hong Kong. So, let's have a little bit of look on it. So, Forward World Magazine is a magazine um, that uh, lets us know about the world and some amazing cities, including this edition, we are going to talk about Hong Kong. It's a really wonderful city. So there are many kinds of cultures in Hong Kong that are blended together, east and west, they're all blended together, and um, it also has a lot of unique things um, in Hong Kong that makes up this city. Um, this edition will surely amaze you, and you will be really interested in learning more about Hong Kong. So we're going to talk about some things like food, traditions, culture, and transportation, and some other history things that happened in Hong Kong, so you can know more about it. So, you might think, so, where's actually Hong Kong? Well, it's pretty easy. This map shows Hong Kong right here, at Southeast Asia of China. So at the Imperial Ages, so long times ago, ago Hong Kong served as a trading port. Uh, there are actually some antiquities in Hong Kong that are really rare and can't see them normally, but uh, as you can see, it's just normally just a trading port, so nothing special with it before when still in the internal ages. So this is one of the maps, it's called, uh, it's in the, uh, it's, uh, called Yut Dai Ke. it's a book about Hong Kong in the Ming Dynasty, and Hong Kong in Chinese literally mean Fragrant Harbor. Uh, you might be confused with the name, uh, but actually, the name is actually um, meaning that because it always sold fragrance to the, to the Arabians, so that's why it's called um, the name Fragrant Harbor. It's a harbor to sell fragrant to the Arabians. And this is cultural heritage in Hong Kong. So as you can see here, this is the Cantonese Opera, which uh, most of you have probably heard of this, probably even watched it. It's really cool to watch. Um, if you visit Hong Kong for the first time, you'll definitely love Cantonese Opera. It's very really special and um, it's so exciting to watch this Cantonese Opera. So, not only just the opera, there are actually many kinds of cultural heritages. For example, smoke tea, it's definitely the most silkiest milk tea in the world. This is one of the medicine. It does work well, but it's a bit better anyway. And this is the Dragon Boat Festival, which is a famous festival. You can eat some rice dumplings or go on these ships, which uh, these boats called Dragon Boats, which obviously made its name. So traditions, uh, Chinese New Year, uh, and a lot of other festivals happen in Hong Kong. Some festivals in Hong Kong, there might be some special celebrations. For example, uh, there might be some dragons made out of some sticks and fire matches. And that's one of kind of the traditions in Hong Kong. Uh, and also they celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is a festival that you can eat mooncakes. As most of the people, uh, if they have stayed in Hong Kong for a while, they probably will know about the Mid-Autumn Festival. And there are also, in Chinese New Year, some Fai Chun, which the stick on walls, they're red, and it's to, um, it's to celebrate New Year, and um, it's said that it's just to, um, like, uh, wish someone having good luck. So this is the Chang Chao Bon Festival. As you can see, climbers have to climb on top of the Bon Mountain, and then get the bonds and um, collect as many of the as they can. And some of them uh, have different scores. Most of them have uh, like these symbols on them, you know? and um, to mark the word peace. Because I'll buy some souvenirs uh, that look like them in Chen Chou. Awesome. And MTR, one of the transportation in Hong Kong. It's very, very, very famous. It's the most safest transportation in the world, uh, as in some boats, and um, so yeah, you can travel on the MTR, it's really safe, it's in Hong Kong, and yeah, and it's, let's look at some data right here, 
As you can see, most travels around Bernadian Falls bus, uh, but this is just in 1994, and MTR, and then mini bus, and then taxi, and then KCR, which is now part of the MTR system, light rail, and ferry. So food. So uh, if you're coming to Hong Kong, you definitely want to taste um, what's special in Hong Kong. Um, you have to look at the food. For example, this is a pineapple bun. Uh, it's a kind of bun, it's really crispy. Don't worry, it does not contain pineapple. It is just um, a bun with butter. But it's really crispy and you probably like it. So you can see them in the tea restaurant or Hong Kong style cafe. This is ham and macaroni, it's really simple. Unlike the Italian ones, this one doesn't have cheese, so it's actually modified to fit the taste of the uh, people living in Hong Kong. So as you can see, you can scan this QR code for a simulation of a menu, or you can eat generally in Hong Kong. This is dim sum. It has a lot of variety. Uh, one of them is named siu mai, like this. This is siu mai. Some of them have meat, and some of them have seafood. It's really special. So as you can see, the QR code is right here. So I'll let you guys just scan it for a while. So you guys probably have finished, so let's move on. So, uh, City of Anarchy. Uh, I've made a writing about uh, someone living in the Kowloon Wall City, or the City of Darkness, City of Anarchy. There are many names about it. So, Kowloon Wall City, it's, a, it's not really a city. It's just a place where people live in, in the middle of Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong was once colonized by the British, but only one area, they never colonized it. And that is the Kowloon Wall City. It's now rebuilt into a park, but formerly, um, it is a big city. It's the most densely packed place in the world. As you can see, uh, it is built in the imperial China, but as you can see, it lasted a long time, and the city was rebuilt for some years, and then, so, it became a really, really big community, but um, the police, the army, and the other armies cannot enter the Kowloon Walled City. So there are a lot of illegal things happening in Kowloon Walled City. This is how it looks like. See, it's so densely packed. Imagine if you're living in this. Uh, I can't imagine it. It's so, 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 so packed. So, also, do you know that um, there is, there, there's one uh, theme park. It's a kind of video arcade in Japan that simulates the Kowloon Walled City. So Kowloon Walled City actually inspired a lot of cyberpunk ideas. It was rebuilt into a park, as I just said earlier. Um, so many things are still kept, but it cannot keep the um, community. There will still be a lot of illegal things happening in Hong Kong, which is definitely not a good idea to keep these, so that's why. It's a very hard decision to demolish it because the people living in it, so normal people living in it, they have to find a new home now. So yes, this is the Commonwealth city. Poverty. So Hong Kong is definitely cyber, definitely cyber. So cyber, so many buildings. But just say, in Sham Shui district, there's still a lot of people living in there that's pretty poor. So for example, these are called bedside room, cage room, or coffin home. There are many names of this. And see, um, it generally looks like just a bed. But all the things when you're eating, when you just try to watch the television, see the TV's right here. You have to go into these bed beds. You can't get a really big living room or something like that. It's just bed size. So it's a really poor uh, place to live in. But because um, some people cannot earn that much money because of poverty, that's why you have to live in these cage rooms or coffin home. So here's an additional image of someone living in the best size room. You can see this person is really hopeless, as you can see. So, firstly, these people must find a place to live better. Um, so, they have to find a place to live better. Things may be gone, and it will make them continue their living forever. So, someone has to get this room open, and they have to solve these problems. So the government is trying to improve these homes currently and improve their lives, but it's really hard because these people are really poor. So, Shekhet made fire. 
There's an estate named Shekimei Estate, as you probably know, but the creation of it is actually a sad story. So here is just a fictional article about it. Well, um, it's a fictional newspaper article, but the things inside it's real. And the Shekimei fire destroyed a lot of homes. So I'll just talk about what is the Shekimei fire. There's a place in Hong Kong named Shekit May, and then um, it actually, one night, Christmas, the whole, um, it's a lot of wooded houses. It just burned, just completely burned. Fire, see? It's all demolished. The fire remains the, one of the most strangest cases in the world. It's really a mystery. Nobody knows what happened to um, this, um, to like who made this fire or what made this fire. Nobody knows. It's later rebuilt into an estate for the people originally living in there to live in a better place because now they're homeless. Like, in that time, they're homeless. Hong Kong music. Generally, sometimes it's a remix of Japanese music, Western music, and the Cantonese music. Sometimes like a blend. There are many classic songs that show Hong Kong spirit. For example, Under the Lion Rock. Well, Lion Rock Mountain, as you can see outside the window, actually, you can also see it. Um, it's a kind of mountain, uh, but, the, but when it's called Under the Lion Rock, it's actually just representing the Hong Kong spirit. So, commonly, before the colonial age, we sang traditional songs that are no longer common in Hong Kong. You can still hear some of these, but a lot of these are already fading out. So I think I scanned this QR code. I made a remix um, of a kind of a song that I made earlier, a song about Hong Kong. I remixed it, um, remade the lyrics, scanned it about QR code, and uh, you can see the simulation. So, neon lights. Very exciting. You can look around a the classroom. There are a lot of neon signs you can spot. So like this, you can see over there, over there, over there, lots of places, you can see these neon signs. Before, um, some uh, organizations um, began to say that you cannot build these neon lights anymore. There are still a lot of them in Hong Kong. Uh, it also brings a lot of cyberpunk ideas um, to, the, uh, to the city. But, um, because eco-friendly reasons, like um, neon lights, um, they generally open all day, and at night, there'll be a lot of light pollution happening. So, these are all now, a lot of the, these are already destructive. Uh, some of these are still kept in Mong Kok, but it's really rare right now. These pawn shops um, just continue these kind of neon signs. But photographers use the camera to let everybody remember it. You can still see a lot of these images right now. But there are, lo uh, but there are a lot of these neon signs already, like, um, destructed in Hong Kong. This is the Dai Pai Dong. It's a place um, for people to eat and chat. Um, generally in Hong Kong, once there are thousands of these restaurants. But right now, there are only 20 exists. If you can see one of these, you, you can try it actually. It's actually a place for communicating and for eating. Of course, it's a restaurant. But not just eating, it's a kind of place for people to actually um, have a kind of interaction between people. As you can see, in Macau, these are actually continued, but in Hong Kong, only 20 exists. So, Aberdeen Fishing Village, a place in Hong Kong named Aberdeen, there's lots of fishing village. The village, um, life in the village is fairly simple. But there are some festivals that are still kept in this place, Aberdeen Fishing Village. You can also visit if you like. Famous people, Bruce Lee. Everybody in the world, possibly, knows about this person. Really famous in martial arts. He even invented a kind of it, Jeet Kune Do, a strong martial art that spread all across the world. Um, he lived in Hong Kong, but he died, and people were terrified by the news later. Um, and uh, just some trivia, but um, in the United States, one of the museum actually showed some of the things about Jeet Kune Do and Bruce Lee. He's a really famous person, as you can see right here. Famous people. So, key character of Hong Kong, one of them is Charles Tay Kong. 
who's a scientist who invented the optical fiber. And um, always, when people are browsing the internet, uh, mostly you have to use these optical fibers. And he got the Nobel Prize. He's well known across the world, you know. Japanese occupation. It was an invasion from Japan during the World Wars. It ruled Hong Kong, well, actually invaded Hong Kong for three years and eight months. Many people were killed in an unusual number and many warriors were sacrificed to save people. Uh, the spirit of um, trying to defeat these people is still remembered today and it's a really sad thing that happened over there. Three years and eight months, it was pretty scary. But at last, Jap the Japanese surrendered and um, so peace was back again. And so here we'll talk about some happy news. Yeah. Where to go? So if you're new to Hong Kong, you have to go to these 10 places, definitely. Tim Sha Choi Harbor, definitely. Tai O, Ong Ping, Disneyland Resort. Well, the kids will probably like this. Ocean Park, also. Nan Lian Guan Shi. It's a place in Diamond Hill. It's really beautiful right here. Um, there are some designs that are trying to simulate um, the imperial ages. It's pretty interesting, you also go here. Shopping in the Harbor City, um, Central and Admiralty Malls, uh, tasting Hong Kong food. You have to do the ninth thing, definitely. And the Victorian Harbor, which is also really beautiful. Modern Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a truly metropolitan city after the handovers and golden ages. There are many predictions of Hong Kong. What do you think Hong Kong will look like at the future? Well, I'm not sure, you guys can decide it. So, extra 3D Google Earth. You can scan this so you can go into Google Earth, explore around the 3D model of Hong Kong, and just scan this QR code. Okay, and finally, gallery. This is my diorama. You can look around a classroom and you might find this, or some other things that look like this. Um, this is one of the KCR frames, um, and this is the old Hong Kong map, as you can see. This is the Hong Kong map. Well, you can't really um, imagine that this was the former Hong Kong. It's pretty interesting, this map. And this is my uh, newest Chinese text about Ong Ping. Um, and this is the whole text right here. And this is the end. Hong Kong, East and West. Thank you for everyone for watching this. Thank you.